how's it going everyone? Welcome back to another episode. Um, today I have an interesting piece of equipment here that I'd like to share with you guys. I have a prototype um, Hasselblad tiltable camera body that was made by a landscape photographer in Sweden by the name of Igmar Hasselman and Halmasen. Igmar Halmasen for Hasselblad C lenses and he made he made this because he wanted to get a tiltable back similar to a view camera for those of you who are familiar with those and what this allows you to do is by tilting this back and your film goes here it changes your plane of focus normally your plane of focus on every camera is parallel with your lens wherever you put in your lens it's just straightforward this makes it kind of into a cone shape by laying the focal plane down and allows you to get a foreground in the center of the lens, uh, some kind of subject like a flower in focus, as well as the background, uh, maybe a mountain or a valley in focus as well, while having a open aperture. So you can get something close up and far away, both in focus, and you don't have to be on like F22 or anything like that. So it's very interesting um, in that regard. It's pretty cool. This is a really rare body. Only a few hundred were made. And this is number 89. After this photographer made this, um, Hasselblad saw it and liked it. So they made their own version actually. So this is kind of a prototype. This isn't a Hasselblad design, but later on Hasselblad did make one. So I'm gonna show you how it works real quick because it has some interesting tricks to it. And then I'm gonna go shoot it. I've already shot with it a little bit. Um, and then afterward, I'm going to just review the pictures so we can see how they look. And I'm gonna talk about the compositions with the tiltable back here. So to use this, let's pretend we're setting up a composition here. Um, so your viewfinder's back here. Let's say I set it all up, it's ready to go. I'm gonna turn it so in real life you wouldn't do that. But you take your, oh, so first off is you have to use the shutter release cable. So you close this halfway until you hear a little click. And that is your shutter release closing, but not taking a picture. So now that a lot will stop light from coming in because there's no curtain or back or anything like on a normal camera body. Then you get your film back. Well, you take your viewfinder off put your film back on, then you take the slide out and you push the shutter cable again. That takes the actual picture. Make sure to put your slide back in. And then you turn this, I'll bring it over here so you can see it. You turn this to re-cock your lens and it opens up your aperture and your shutter. And then you can put your viewfinder back on and you're ready to go. You just have to make sure that you manually wind your film right here on the back to the next slide. Use the counters here and then you're ready to go. So that's how it works and it's a tiltable back here which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah now I'm gonna just go take some pictures with it and then I'll review them afterwards. So. Um, let's get to it. Alrighty, so we're out here at one of my favorite parks to shoot at, um, the International Peace Gardens at Jordan Park in Salt Lake City. And I got this Hasselblad back loaded up with um, 120 film. In fact, I have to finish loading it in there. And so I'm gonna go out and set up some compositions with this tiltable Hasselblad camera body to get some different focal planes. So something interesting is happening here. I have this set up where I have these two um, um, dock posts in my composition. And when I focused it straight on, I was focused on the front post. And then when I tilted it back, it shifted the focus um, kind of down the post, down the composition. 
And I noticed then I focused far away I, on my lens, more for distance. And as I focused farther away, it didn't, on my viewfinder, it didn't focus further away, but instead it changed my focus from up to down rather than from close to far. So, and I could see that in the detail of the grain of the wood post. So I'm gonna set up this composition and get a picture with that. All right, I got the shutter closed, got the back on. designed really for by a landscape photographer for landscape photography so that you could get something up close and then the big scene in the background far away both in focus so that's the kind of goal I want to get I have four more slides left on this roll so I want to get more of a landscape picture and try and get um, something up close and far away so I don't go up the canyon I might have to hike up a hill or something but I'll try and look for something like that all right so I'm pointing straight up. I got some blossoms on a tree and a mountain in the background. And I have my blossoms on the tree branch in focus right in the center. And the mountain in the background, the peak is also um, focused or in focus. And then all the edges of the blossoms are all blurry. So, so I'm probably gonna keep it at uh, the smallest aperture I'm metering at is f8. So I'm gonna keep it at f8. That'll still give me some shallow depth of field, but won't make it as blurry as I'd like as I'm looking at on my glass right now, because what I'm looking through is a f2.8, just because the aperture is wide open right now. But I really like that composition, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the picture. I got the peak in the background in focus these blossoms on a tree right in front of me in focus, and then everything in between is blurry. It's very unique. Uh, and I'm accomplishing that by, uh-oh, oh good, by changing this focus plane on the body. So I'm gonna close, I'm gonna make sure I close my leaf springs. Cool, I just did a test to make sure it's working. Close my shutter release. All right, put the back on. Uh-oh, I just moved it, moved it back. Looks good still, I was just making sure it's tight. All right, I'm gonna take the slide out. Listen for the shutter. Put the slide back in. <clears throat> Advance it to the next uh, slide on my roll. Alrighty, so I got my film back from the lab. Um, this is my first time using this prototype tiltable Hasselblad body. And there was a few problems that I ran into right off the gate. So I was told that um, since you can't wind your film and progress the slides with the Hasselblad body as you normally would, you have to manually do it. I was told the numbers on the side aren't accurate, but that you pull this back and you look back here and see numbers. Each slide on the back of the film has a number one, two, three, four. So you, once you see that number, you know it's in the right position. The problem is I put the film in Ektar 100, and this is one of the first Hasselblad backs ever made design-wise. So I maybe back in the day, film used to have numbers on the back, but my Ektar 100 did not. So I was sitting here winding it, looking for the numbers, figured out there were no numbers. So I said, okay, I'll just go off these side numbers. And what happened is, as you can see here, half of my roll is blank, because I just wound through it, looking for numbers. And then all of the slides I did take, um, 
they're overlapping ever so slightly, so there's no space in between them. So, yeah, that's a little bit annoying. It, they're barely overlapping, so it hasn't really ruined any compositions, but hopefully I have some good examples on this roll that demonstrate the um, focal plane being changed with this tilting function on this body. So I'm gonna go ahead and scan them and then we can, I'll hop on the computer and film the screen and then we can look at them. All right, so I have this first picture. Um, I took some other pictures that I didn't f uh, record on camera in the video. So I'll put those at the end in a little slideshow and you can see those, but also um, review them here. So this one was cool because once I laid it out and I adjusted the focus on my lens to go further away and closer up, instead of going further away and closer, the focus actually moved up and down the composition. And you can see that, I could see that from the grain on this post as I adjusted the focus on my lens. I could see it go straight up and down and that's because the focus plane was laid flat rather than straight. So on this one you can see that the top of these posts are in focus, but they're you know, distance between them while the bottoms are blurry, everything below it is blurry. And then you also have this one back here that's in focus. Now like I said, my camera, um, I need to figure out how to get the timing right on adjusting slides because you can see a double exposure on the top part and if you saw this earlier in the video you're probably thinking what that was and is because all the pictures I have were overlapping a little bit. Those, so this is from another picture but you can still see the effects how it's blurry here and here but in focus on the top of these posts and there's distance between them so that's pretty cool. Alright so this one was the one I had pointing up with the blossoms, so you can see, oh and these are all unedited by the way, or at least these first two we were looking at are. So you can see um, the blossoms here are in focus and part of this mountain is in focus. The top of it is blurry and you can see how, you can see the line what's in focus and out but everything else is super shallow and this is a f8 so it's still super shallow um but yeah you can see that effect it looks really cool i wish the point of this mountain was in focus but i couldn't get it adjusted or see it well enough to get it like that but i guess i just need more practice with it so this was up by the capitol building in salt lake and i really like this photo a lot so you can see that this flower is in focus with the whole background super blurry part of the tree up here is in focus and part of this capitol building right here is in focus the top of it is blurry on the bottom but you can see the detail it's not blurry right here in these, on these columns on the building so this is kind of cool. When I look at this one, my eyes shift from this flower to the building on the trees, but I like, um, if you do F22, you could get this whole thing in focus, um, but I used a shallow depth for that kind of artistic choice, I would say. And then this one, you can see the more of the building is in focus. We got all this blurry, but then right here, part of the... Um, tree is in focus so it's similar kind of setup composition just different subjects or different angle I would say so part of the tree is in focus and not in focus it's kind of hard to for your eye to like know what to look at so it has an effect for sure but it's not necessarily a good picture or composition in my opinion so here I try to get these whole flowers and bush in focus while also getting the top of the building in focus and then I have some light flare coming in here so hopefully that gives you an idea of how it can look i'm gonna try and shoot some more with this and use f22 and try and get the entire scene in focus so i want to get something close up in focus but just have everything in focus as well so we'll i'll try and do that and post it up on my instagram so uh, those are the good good ones i got all right, so hopefully that gives you an idea of how to adjust the focal plane on your compositions using 
a tiltable back. Um, if you're interested in getting a camera with that functionality, um, specifically for Hasselblad, I know they're pretty rare and hard to find and probably cost a lot. I would recommend using a view camera. My dad has a view camera and I'm gonna start shooting with that. Um, just because it has a lot more functionality and capability and you can change and really hone in on your composition and creating the different kind of focus um, angles you want. Whereas with this camera I was using, um, I had to kind of change my composition to fit within the, what the camera was capable of doing rather than changing the camera to do what you want it to do for your composition. So yeah, but I definitely learned a lot. There's a lot of kinks to work out. I probably won't really shoot with this particular body again or much because if I want to create images with different focal uh, focus plane angles, then I'll use the view camera just because it's better for that. It's more professional and designed for that. This is a prototype made for Hasselblad by a landscape photographer who wanted to get these kind of pictures. And that one image that I had with the mountain and the tree, it, the lens was pointing up and the body has to tilt down. So I was like laying on the ground to look at the viewfinder. And so that was kind of annoying, but it was definitely fun to use. I learned a lot and I really like some of the images, how they turned out. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up subscribe and I'll see you next time.